My name is Brenda Kerubo and this is Business Cafe. Now, according to the World Bank, climate change may push over 130 million people into poverty by 2030 and cause over 200 million people to migrate within their own countries by 2050. Now, investing in adaptation to help countries and companies become more resilient is therefore crucial. Patrick Fiakohien, of course, <laughs> I hope I say that correctly, is the founder, CEO, and of course, he's a professor and a doctor, and he's the founding CEO of the Global Center on Adaptation, GCA, an international organization that is hosted at the Netherlands, and it is working as a solutions broker to accelerate innovative and scale adaptation action for a climate free for of course for a climate world and so of course here are some social business stories making headlines but before we go into that let's just delve a little bit deeper into that discussion so thank you so much for joining us professor we are talking about at least mobilization so far of about 25 billion dollars and this of course is in partnership with the african development bank that's a lot of money considering it's just at least two billion shy of the economic size of senegal thank you so much uh, brenda for having me on the show uh, today yes 25 billion dollar is a lot of money and at the same time it isn't a lot of money why is that the climate emergency as you said is really happening globally but it's particularly impacting Africa and quite frankly it's particularly impacting the Horn of Africa and particularly here in, in Kenya. What do we know? How much money needs to flow towards climate adaptation for the continent as a whole? Well the number is 33 billion dollars a year. Well in fact how much is flowing from the global north to Africa each year right now, six billion dollars. So you can imagine, Brenda, there is a 27 billion dollar shortfall of financing flow to Africa. And the bottom line is this, Africa did not cause the climate emergency, Kenya did not cause the climate catastrophe, but it's suffering the brunt of it. So there is a profound moral injustice in the global system around this whole agenda. Well, last November, Brenda, the international community, triggered by President Kenyatta, promised to double adaptation finance for Africa. Now it's time for the international community to deliver on that promise. And the reality is this, food prices are up, inflation is up, energy prices is up, debt crisis is up, partly because of the Ukraine crisis, but Africa can no longer wait the international community has to come forward, has to step up, and that's precisely why President Kenyatta will be today inaugurated as a global champion on this agenda. Of course, and we will delve much deeper into that. Kenya, let's take Kenya for an example. Kenya loses at least 3 to 5% of its gross domestic products right. because of these drought uh, measures and at the same time flooding. And this has caused a lot of food insecurity and at the same time we are having inter-community fights within the, the, the ecosystem. Kenya needs the financing. We did see a pledge of at least $100 billion at the COP26. Mm -hmm. You have been visiting various areas in Northeastern where the drought has affected right. areas. What did you notice and what does this uh, delay in financing mean? Yes, thank you for, for bringing this up. Yes, indeed, in the last few days, I was in Samburu, I was in uh, Makweni. And what came to mind, it is one thing to say in the global north that there is a the climate emergency in Africa. Quite frankly, uh, Brenda, it's quite something different to be with those communities in the field and realize how dire the situation is. I met with community members who said we have to walk 20 kilometers one way, 20 kilometers back to fetch water. I mean, obviously, it has a huge impact on their livelihoods and on their lives. At the same time, what I also experienced is the extraordinary resilience of these communities. There are examples of adaptation in practice. It sounds very abstract, but in essence, it's very straightforward. What I have seen, the creation of boreholes, um, the creation of water pans, pasture farmers, um, digital climate solutions, livestock markets. These communities were very proud to show how they're coping with this uh, changing climate. But at the same time, the message was over and over again, we have the solutions, we know what needs to be done, but we need international support to scale this up. And that is precisely 
where the so-called triple AP comes in. The triple AP is a very simple construct. It's the Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program. It is the $25 billion program which you introduced in the beginning, uh, uh, Brenda. What will it do? It will support communities like in Makweni, communities like in Samburu, with having international finance flowing into these communities. The thing is this, during the COVID crisis, the Western world managed to mobilize trillions of dollars overnight to support these economies. Is it too much to ask for the Western world to deliver on that promise of $100 billion a year today? And the answer is, it is not. And why is that? Every dollar, pound, euro, sh Kenyan shilling invested in climate adaptation has a much higher return on economic returns. So it's not just only the right thing to do, it's the economic smart thing to do. And the point is this, it needs to be done right now. Of course, and majority of that financing will go into building resilient infrastructure. What kind of infrastructure is needed for Kenya, especially in areas such as northeastern? So in northeastern uh, Kenya, what do you, I mean, the, the bottom line issue is lack of access to water. So what would be smart, which I've seen in the field, which has been demonstrated by these communities, they've said, well, we know when the long rains are coming, we need to store, conserve that water. Because when the dry spells come, we can then extract basically the water which we have collected uh, during the long rains. So these types of interventions are happening in the field, but again, they're not happening in, at the scale which is required. And as a consequence of that, you have this sort of tensions being built up in these regions over lack of natural access to natural resources. So the AAAP, the Africa Adaptation Excavation Program, for which President Kenyatta, which we will discuss, will become the global champion, it will mobilize additional resources. But what is vital, what is vital, is one thing to have additional resources somewhere. These resources have to flow to these communities in the field and the programs which are being sort of implemented needs to be co-designed with these local communities. I think that form of partnership is not just being a global champion, it is being a global champion as basically being a voice of the voiceless. Mm. All right, and like you're talking about no size fits all. Precisely. Essentially what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So what does this title mm -hmm. mean for Kenya? I mean, we should say congratulations to the president in advance, but what exactly does it mean for Kenya? He will be able to represent all these African economies, but what does it mean for Kenya? Well, first the question is, why is President Kenyatta the global champion on uh, the triple AP? Why will he be inaugurated today? And that answer is very straightforward because he is seen as the global icon on climate adaptation. And why is that? Because he's investing during his term, he has invested here in Kenya on climate adaptation massively. At the same time, he has been a voice globally. You mentioned uh, COP26, that's a, a climate summit last November. Well, there was COP26, there was COP25, there was COP24. All these summits, President Kenyatta was there. And he said, we know what we need. We have a plan. We have the commitment. We have some of our resources on the table. But now you Western community, now you need to play ball and partner with us. So he will be as a global statesman, will be this advocate of the program. And being a, the voice of the voiceless has sort of this connotation. He has the access to the prime ministers and the presidents globally because he's so respected. And he will open up doors which will be closed for others. And he will be able to have these frank conversations and reminding people of, and leaders what they have promised over time. Because Brenda, my big concern is this. In Glasgow, the international community, whether it's the United States, whether it's Canada, whether it's Germany, whether it's the UK, whether it's France, whether it's the Netherlands, they have promised doubling their financial commitment. And now they say, well, actually, we have a Ukraine crisis. Now our development budget, which we have, in fact, we're going to move to Ukraine. Well, Africa didn't cause the Ukraine crisis. Africa didn't cause the climate uh, crisis. So now President Kenyatta's role is extremely important as this sort of moral compass, as this global leader who basically 
manages the global conversation. And at the end of the day, managing the narrative, the results matrix is very simple. Is money flowing into Africa or not? Is money flowing into Kenya or not? And is money flowing to these local communities or not? It's a huge task. But if, if there is one person who can do it, it's President Uhuru Kenyatta. And that's why we are all, as an international community, will be today in this very important um, inaugural event, global leaders will basically welcome him in this new role in his post-presidency period. Of course, and some of the key uh, global speakers like you're talking about is, of course, the chairman, uh, Ban Ki-moon, will also be present. Yes. We also have the IMF uh, director. director, of course, yeah. Kristalina Georgieva, who will also be there. Yes. And also have other key stakeholders, of course, in the climate change uh, landscape, who will also be representing. So this is, of course, a big deal. And, of course, his endorsement is critical when it comes to African economies. Indeed. Mm. So what I see is this, this Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program. It didn't just fall from the sky. Of course, it has been designed. It has been developed. Who was the key architect behind this largest adaptation program, not just for Africa, for the world, was President Kenyatta. He pushed for it and he said, on behalf of all African leaders, this is what we need. So this is something, a journey, which takes sort of years to, to implement. And why is it so, let's say, instrumental that President Kenyatta will now become this global voice of this program, hence the global voice of the voiceless? Because it is a sprint, right? We need to deliver now, but it is also a marathon, right? I mean, you need to deliver each single year. It's not just one sort of delivery. And what better person to do than from a Kenya, the marathon champions in the world, to have President Kenyatta delivering on that? Sprinting and a marathon at the same time. All right, Dr. Patrick, even as we finish, we have the COP27 in November. Indeed. Shama Sheikh, Egypt. Are we going to see the same narrative or this time something will change? Uh, thank you for that question. So there are these annual summits and at these annual summits, leaders come and they promise the moon. They promised the moon last uh, November in, in Glasgow. Now, COP27 indeed is in Egypt, and it is coined as the Africa Summit. It has to deliver for Africa. Well, Africa equates to adaptation, right? Um, uh, impacting the climate uh, emergency and addressing that. So Africa adaptation is the triple AP. The bottom line for COP27 is very simple. It is a moment of truth. Leaders will all, such as President Kenyatta, in his role as global champion, will turn the table and say, well, you promised doubling adaptation finance. Here is the plan. Where is your financial commitment? It's that type of um, honest conversation which needs to take place. And as you said, Brenda, it's not just the narrative. Financing needs to flow. Grant agreements need to be signed. Programs need to be developed so that uh, the people and the communities, whether it's in Samburu or uh, other communities here in Kenya, can see financing flowing and in fact can see the 